I'm Dave Pinter, president of Safety Road Materials, and I'm visiting my very, very good friend, Don Stickle, who happens to be my leading dealer in Iowa, and he sells an awful lot of guardrail, and he's going to explain this program much, much better than I can. Don Stickle, come in and say hello. David, how are you? How you doing, you old good, farmer? Good, good. Why, well, uh, yeah, I have sold quite a bit of it here, I guess, for you. Uh, I know the month of April we sold 33 loads. Yes, we did. Um, this is some of my fences you can see down through here. I've put up miles of it. I've got 3,000 acres of land. We feed 9,000 cattle. And so it, it become a very important thing for me to get started with this. And when I started, I had no mind I was ever going to sell any. But I uh, developed quite a market for it when everybody seen me putting it up. 200 loads you sold. You yeah. sold over 200 loads. Well, it'd be 200 loads like in April and up to now, or probably a little more than that. But uh, I know we had seven loads come into my own yard right here, and people just come in here, 10 or 15 or 20, 100 pieces of crack, and them seven loads are just about all gone. Yeah, Dave, we got some men working here this morning, putting up this section of fence. We've put up miles of it already, and uh, it's it really the answer. I've been putting it up for five years now, and I don't know of anything that's any more maintenance-free, trouble-free, once it's up, it'll be there probably uh, as long as your kids and grandkids will ever be around, or any of ours. What were you using before? I used a very good grade of lumber, plank, mainly two and three inch plank. Tried to buy as much creosote stuff as I could, but it's still split and broke. And uh, Today they tell me that, uh, I talked to one of the counties, and they tell me their three inch plank are costing Coming in load lots at nineteen hundred and some dollars a thousand. Nineteen hundred and some dollars a thousand. That's a lot of money. That's like uh, five dollars and something a running foot on a three inch mm -hmm. piece of wood. And I come across this idea that there's just nothing any better if uh, the United States used it nationwide. If there's anything better, I'm sure DOT would be purchasing it. You run trucks and stuff and everywhere, mountains and all, valleys, you name it. Would you explain how to install this, Don? Well, I have two men working here right now. They're, uh, they're just putting it on. One man's, uh, well, actually what we do is either drill the holes for the post or drive them. We are using railroad ties, a very good, what they call a relay railroad tie, and put the tie in every 12 and a half feet, 12 and a half feet, it laps over a foot, drill three holes when we're using three pieces of steel, drive the bolts in, come along and hang the steel on. That's just how simple it is. You don't need no corners. The longer the fence, the, the more strength it is. That's why when you see along the interstates, the long stretches, you never see any post out of line. And you know them trucks are hitting them and stuff all the time. It's the steel. The steel just doesn't stretch like when you nail boards on end to end, nail them end to end, they just, the post will push out, they knock off, there's just no way, even if a post rots off, the fence will never collapse, your cattle will never get out, just no way, the way this is being built, and you build it right back, just the same way the state does it, that's the way we recommend it. Dave, I want you to see what we're doing here in the rock. Now, we normally always use railroad ties, but we took and cut these 13 half foot steel in half and and drove them in the ground in the rock we can drive and pound them we use a pounder we pound them right through the rock and it's just working fine we really haven't done a lot of this yet but i can see it's going to work perfect of course I, I i tried to steal the first thing i wasn't for sure but i in my mind and in my mind this steel is going to work perfect which i know it will uh and so whenever we get in a rocky area or it don't necessarily have to be rocky the steel will do everything it's sure going to be better than using the pipe as far as I'm concerned. It's all a galvanized steel. Yeah, you can see over there where he's taking some pictures. Our posts are all 25 foot apart in front of that cornfield, and we've got cattle run right up to it. If there's anybody going to worry about it, it'd be me, but I sure not worried. And there's no way them cattle are going to ever get out or get through there. And we handle a lot of big cattle. There's only two there, and the posts are 25 foot apart and they lap over at each post a foot. Over here, we have a display on the Stickle Farm, 
And I think you did this so when people come and ask you questions or they want to buy guardrail, they must ask you how to install this. Right. So would you explain how easy it is to install this? Yes. We just set three posts, or whatever amount of posts, we set three here. Uh, they're 12 and a half feet apart. Here's where the middle one went. It laps over 12 inches. Every one at every post, it laps 12 inches. That's what makes it so solid. There's no give, no nothing. It, it's, it's just a solid, a solid against uh, whatever post. You can use a round post as well as you can a square post because you drill your hole through the center of the post. You put this fence in. We put three of them up for a crowl. We start a foot from the ground. We space them six inches between. That makes a five and a half foot, five, five and a half foot fence. There's nothing in the world going to go over it. I'm, I'm six foot, so you can see how tall it is. Or six, I guess I'm six foot two. I'm six foot. Man. But anyway, you use boards or anything else, you got to put the posts closer together, which is posts are very expensive today. You all know what this wood is. Plus, when you put the post in, the wooden fence, it's like a hinge. You nail up boards end to end. These lap over at each one, and, you, and it locks. It locks. The longer the fence, the stronger the fence, your post will never push out. Either way, like when cattle's against them crowding it, like a board fence, they'll always your post, you always see them pushing out. This fence will never push out because you can't stretch steel. This steel will not stretch. You see it up and down the highways. The United States use it nationwide. DOT, if they could buy something better, they would. You don't see their fences along the guardrails all crooked. And you know them trucks and cars and everything have wrecks and run against them. But they, it just don't stretch. They might put a little dent in it here and there. Don't mind none. You can back into this a tractor, a pickup, livestock. Nothing is going to mess it up. Out in the pastures, we also, Dave, go 25 foot from like that post to that post bolt two of them together. We have the little bolts to bolt them together, and, and, and we put use two of them out there like we did up above. We'll show you here in a minute in the pastures, and we go as much as 25 foot apart without no problem with any livestock cattle getting through it. We are now at where Don Stickle keeps his supply, and we just want to show the audience how easy this is to unload, how straight the pieces are, and we guarantee each section will be straight. Is it easy to unload? Oh yes, there's uh, somewhere between about 40 to 50 pieces, which weighs about four and a half ton, uh, two and a half ton, right, 4,500 pounds. pounds. Uh, the average loader can pick it up. If not, it's easy to take off four or five pieces by hand, and set it on your loader and set it down, come back and pick the rest of it up. It's all loaded with a four before or something in between it so no no it's easy you don't have to be unloading it by hand just if you got any decent kind of load at all just pick it right up and unload it that's how we unload all this just with a, with regular, a loader lo regular loader yep, yep every piece is straight oh yeah you're satisfied with the all way the straight. condition of yes, it is <laughs> how your customers Dave, happy? i wouldn't stalk it all in if it wasn't straight <laughs> and good i know that let me ask you something did you uh ever have a complaint on on the surface rust or so you know there's a Dave, piece here then we can't go through this as you know Okay. Dave, I've sold hundreds of thousands of feet, right? And 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 hundreds and hundreds of customers, and I've never had one customer that's come back and complained to me. I'd say just about a very large percentage of customers just keeps coming back and buying more. If they've got use for it, they come back. I've never had anybody complain, or I've never had them go buy this and then turn around and later on build a fence with something else. Okay, the price of this is going up before the year is over to two dollars a foot. I really How does that. this compare? to wood, sucker rod, cable. <laughs> Anything you have to buy today goes up. I don't know why, Dave, but it does. Okay. Lumber, I talked to a man where they said this lumber's costing up to $1,940 a thousand. How does this compare with $2 a foot? Oh, that's, it's ha less than half. That's less than half. Just right at a, right at a third of what, uh, what, what the, the state counties is paying for their creosote three-inch plank today. Just, this is just about a third of what it's costing them. That's right, five dollars and I thought they said around eighty cents a foot. We figured out at nineteen hundred and forty-four dollars a thousand. They so said this is still it. cheaper. Oh yeah, because it's a lifetime yes. corral. It's maintenance free. It's lifetime. Uh, you put your post twelve and a half feet apart. That's what I'm trying to tell you. How reason easily to put up. Just put your post in the ground, drill three holes, drive the bolts in, and come hang the steel on. Screw your nuts on your fence belt.
That's the story, folks. If you want a lifetime corral, guard reel is your answer. Now we're putting in 20-foot gates because we do have to come in with some big machinery. We're, we met a lot of our gates, we're making them out of the guardrail. You probably noticed over on the other farm where the colored cattle were, there's one spot where you, you got the picture where it showed where we took two 13-footers and, and we used a pipe for a hinge and, and uh, angle iron weld them together. They make a wonderful gate, wonderful gate. Put your post a little higher so you got a guide, guide wire to carry them so they don't sag. But you got a, really a permanent gate. Okay, yeah, Donald, we're putting in a new fence here. It's redoing an old lot. Been here for years. Fence is pretty well tumbled down, so like I say, all of our new fences all going in guardrail. These posts are still setting a little high because they're going to drop them down. They'll drive them in a little bit. See up through there where we put in a new fence. It sure makes a wonderful fence, I'll tell you. It's the most maintenance-free fence I've ever had, like I've said over the past here. It... Uh, it stays nice and straight, never pushes out. You don't have to worry about putting your post in real deep because with that steel, it gets locked together. It just does not spread out. We're just redoing this lot. We keep about 300 head of cattle in here. Uh, we put this fence in here to uh, satisfy my wife. Uh, we've been putting a lot of it in, but we just put this in this year. Occasionally, we have hogs down there, so we put four on. Normally, we never put more than three, and it also acts good as a windbreak. She has her garden out there, and occasionally something gets out of the thing. When we have hogs get in there, but we don't have hogs anymore, but we did put four, and it, it also acts good as a windbreak. Um, but it, like I said, it, you, can't, you can't use it wrong. You just use it about everywhere.